Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today is our third and final video in our multi-video series in which we are taking a look at potential alternatives to the Mazda MX-5, Miata, and Miata RF. In the first video, we took a look at four cars that were priced around the same price point, so cars that were priced under $40,000. In our second video, we took a look at various convertibles, but we did up the price point to not exceed 70,000 US dollars. In today's video, we're taking a look at four different cars with a price cap of 70,000 US dollars. And these four cars are what I consider potentially four cars that are at the next level above the Mazda Miata from a driving experience perspective. So if you're interested in hearing more, then stay tuned. So we are going to do a spec and data comparison, looking at their pricing, their engine and power output, we're going to look at their performance, including zero to 60 times, quarter mile, skid pad, and braking. Their dimensions, both externally and internally, including curb weight and cargo space. We're also going to take a look at the EPA mileage ratings. We're then going to jump in and take a brief look at third-party reviews and what they have to say for each one of these cars. We're then going to close with my feedback. Our four cars include the Audi TTS, the BMW M240iX, the Porsche 718 Cayman, and the Toyota GR Supra 3.0. Let's take a look at the MSRP pricing. The BMW M240iX comes in at the lowest price point, starting off at $49,545 US dollars to $58,495. Next comes the Toyota GR Supra 3.0 with a starting price point of $52,915 to $58,755. Next comes the Audi TTS at $61,295 to $64,090. And lastly is a Porsche 718 Cayman with a starting price point of $64,850. Porsche does offer numerous upgrades, customizations to all of their cars, including the 718 Cayman, which could result in a drastically increased price point, probably doubling your price. Let's take a look at the engine specs. Just a reminder, our Mazda MX-5 Miata and Miata RF come with a two liter four cylinder rear wheel drive, nat naturally aspirated engine that puts out 181 horsepower and 151 foot pounds of torque. With the least amount of horsepower is the Audi TTS, it has a two liter four cylinder turbo, putting out 288 horsepower and 280 foot pounds of torque. Next on the list is the Porsche 718 Cayman with a two liter four cylinder turbo with 300 horsepower and 280 foot pounds of torque. And lastly are the BMW engines, the BMW M240iX with a three liter six cylinder turbo and 382 horsepower and 369 foot pounds of torque and the Toyota GR Supra 3.0 with the same horsepower output of 382 horsepower, but one less foot pound of torque. So let's take a look at the performance. On the low end is the Audi TTS. It has a seven speed dual clutch automatic doing a whopping zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds. That's quick, that is really quick. Quarter mile in 12.8 at 108 miles per hour, a skid pad at just under one G, and a braking of a very respectable 157 feet from 70 miles per hour. Next, the Porsche 718 Cayman 
And I have to say, doing some research, try to pull these numbers, the only thing that I found uh, for the Cayman uh, was the Boxster performance figure. So that's what I have here. They'll be close, relatively speaking, but I was not able to find any performance figures for the non-S, non-GTS, etc. versions. 4.3 seconds, 0 to 60. Quarter mile time of around 12.6 seconds at 113 miles per hour. A skid pad of over 1G and braking of a fantastic 144 feet. That is really impressive. If you opt for the PDK transmission, these performance numbers when it comes to acceleration will probably be faster. I've seen to the tune of about three tenths of a second faster. The BMW M240iX. Really impressive, really impressive with the eight speed auto. Uh, zero to 60 time of 3.6 seconds. The fastest of the bunch. Quarter mile of 12.1 at 114 miles per hour. A skid pad of 0.94 Gs and a braking of 153 feet. The Toyota GR Supra does zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Just a tad slower than the BMW. The quarter mile time is an identical 12.1 seconds. However, the trap speed of 117 miles per hour for the Supra is faster than the BMW. The Supra also has a skid pad and a braking figure that exceeds the BMW. That could have something to do with the weight of the vehicles, and we'll get to that in a minute. It also probably has more to do with the tires that each one of these are come with. Let's jump now to the EPA gas mileage. I have to say that I've been super impressed by the Mazda MX-5 Miata. If we take a look at the Audi TTS, the BMW 240iX, and the Toyota GR Super 3.0, they all have very respectable numbers. With a low city rating of 2223, a highway right rating of 30, 31, 32, very respectable, especially considering power output. Now let's jump to our dimensions. The Mazda MX-5 Miata, it's an extremely small car, and those of you who are tall or robust will probably want to keep that into consideration. We also have included the cargo volume, which is minuscule, less than five cubic feet of storage space. I have identified the weight of the vehicle, the Mazda Miata, coming in at a little over 2,300 pounds and 2,400 pounds for the RF. Being an extremely lightweight vehicle has helped make this a fun vehicle to drive. The lightweight is the Porsche 718 Cayman at just a tad over 3,000 pounds or 3,100 pounds if you add the PDK automatic transmission. Next is the Audi TTS a little over 3,200 pounds, the Toyota GR Supra at 3,400, and lastly, which this is a surprise to me that it's so heavy, is the BMW M240i X at 3,877 pounds. And although it has a frunk, a front trunk, and a rear trunk right behind the mid-mounted engine, having two spaces one of which is 5.2 cubic feet and the rear coming in at 9.7 cubic feet. So total volume, it's there. The fact that it's split up the way it is may make it a little difficult for you to uh, use that space. The BMW M240i acts at 14 cubic feet. So that is, that is sizable. Now let's take a quick look at what third party reviewers are saying. What are my thoughts on these four cars? I think they're all phenomenal. Let's take the Audi TTS. This is a car that I wish I liked more. I would have to pass on the Audi TTS just because the looks does not resonate with me. 
having previously owned a 718 Boxer, I probably personally wouldn't jump to this because it would be too similar. However, with that said, this is a phenomenal car. The Boxer and the Cayman alike have great performance numbers. These cars handle extremely well. They brake phenomenally. The acceleration is there. If you are in the market, if you can afford one, I would highly recommend trying to test drive one. The BMW M240iX and the Supra, I am really happy to hear and see that the Supra will be coming out with a manual transmission. So for those of you who see a lot of value in your Miata, because it does have a manual, that will be an option. The BMW M240iX is really intriguing to me. It provides all wheel drive. The performance is phenomenal. The zero to 60 in the quarter mile times, the skid pad, the braking, all great, great numbers. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a manual transmission, but everything else being equal, this looks like a great car and not too wildly priced considering what you're getting. A lot of different options out there for you at different price points. However, there is something to be said about what Mazda offers in the Miata. The price point is fantastic. It's a lightweight rear wheel drive car. It is a lot of fun to sl sling around and you don't need a track to do so. The fact that it comes in a convertible and a manual transmission just adds to it. For what you're getting, it is difficult to find another car similar enough to the Miata. All of these cars we've gone over throughout these three videos have something more to offer the Miata, but I can't seem to find one that would really truly replace the Miata in all aspects. But with that said, I wanna thank you very much for joining and until next time.